Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for XCOM Chimera Squad. And today, I want to take some time to just talk about the game and go over a few things that you might want to know in the event you haven't jumped in just yet. I mean, sure, of course, if you're a diehard XCOM fan, you may have jumped in last week already. Maybe you've already completed the game, maybe on your subsequent playthrough. Honestly, I don't know. But for those of you guys that are maybe considering picking up the game, possibly still on the fence, and want to know a little bit more about it, then in this video, I want to go over five things you need to know about this new addition to the XCOM franchise. So if you do enjoy this, then like we super appreciated. And of course, let me know in the comments down below if you like these kind of games, if you're into your strategy stuff, if you've played XCOM before, or whether you're going to be jumping in for the very first time. First up, in a number one, this is actually a great point to jump in whether you've played XCOM before or not. Maybe you like strategy games, you've played other things in the past, Advance Wars, Fire Emblem, I don't know, different things like that, but maybe you've never tried XCOM and you're wondering whether this is a point to jump in, because of course there have been previous XCOM games and sometimes jumping into the middle of a big franchise can be a little daunting. Well, the nice thing is Chimera Squad has been created as a standalone game. It isn't a sequel, an expansion, or a DLC. It is simply a standalone title. You don't need to have played any of the previous games. You don't need to have any previous knowledge. I mean, sure, if you have played the previous ones, you'll, of course, be very much aware of what has gone on in, say, XCOM history, some of the other aliens and races and whatnot. But largely speaking, if you're jumping in, this is a self-contained story. And one of the things that Firaxis, the developers, were actually able to do with this is that, as a result of that, create a much tighter, more streamlined experience with a more focused narrative. So, you know, in the past, some of the previous XCOM games were pretty deep, and the fact that you can kind of jump into this one and very quickly is definitely a very uh, kind of welcome addition for new players. It's also got a much tighter focus on storytelling. The story in this time instead centers around a city as opposed to the whole world. That doesn't mean to say there isn't like a seriously meaty campaign because there's a lot of stuff to do in Chimera Squad, but you are focused much more on a individual city this time around. On the ground, there's still all the kind of typical tactical stylings you're used to from previous games. But of course, on top of that, there's also an added strategy layer, the missions you choose, the research that you opt to invest in. There's a lot of kind of significant significant choices and consequences you have as you play throughout the game. Next up in at number two, we have 11 playable unique characters. So in Chimera Squad, you don't go around creating your characters. Instead, there is a roster of unique characters this time around, 11 operatives, and you'll encounter them throughout the game. You start off with four, and of course, as you go, you recruit more operatives. And the cool thing with this is that this time around, you're not just playing as humans, you also, for the first time ever, have aliens fighting side by side with you, allowing players to make use of hybrids, sectoids, mutons, and even the very handy viper this time around. There's some really, really cool classes, some really, really cool operatives. I personally had a great deal of fun with some of the hybrid classes and hearing them sort of, you know, chat to one another and interact with each other is honestly a pretty cool thing. Like I've played previous XCOM games before, so being able to sort of play as the aliens as well as the humans is honestly very cool. There's also specialized and complementary classes, so you can basically execute devastating combos if you team up the right agents together and utilize cooperative actions. So, you know, it's not just a case of picking the team based on, you know, individual characters. You want to think much more about your overall team synergy. So there's definitely a lot of customization, a lot of strategy involved in this, but when it comes to characters, you are at least playing with the fixed roster. Moving on from there to point number three, we have some new features. There are a couple of new things in Chimera Squad that are actually really, really cool. The first one is the new breach mode. So this is basically how you enter battles. In previous games, you would of course load in and you would then move your team accordingly. Whereas now, because you're kind of going into certain missions or different rooms throughout the mission, anytime you enter a new map, a new mission, a new area, you enter via this thing called a breach point or a breach mode. And you basically then choose your units and assign them to different breaches as they breach the door, as they would do in one of those sort of like police movies. You then have the option to quickly shoot the like immediate enemies and you know sometimes you may take them out quickly sometimes you may just do damage to them but it basically allows you to get a drop on the enemies as you begin your fight but it's not just a kind of a cool action sequence to begin the uh you know the typical turn-based strategy instead it also adds some tactical elements to it because depending on the units you place depending on the positions you place different breach points will also offer you with different bonuses to begin with so it might be that you put a unit on a door and then when they go through they get increased defense or they get increased critical chance or they get like a guaranteed damage boost. So you'll then want to think sensibly about not just who you put into your team, but also which breach points you place them at. Additionally, there's also a new interleave turn system whereby in previous games you would make all your strategic moves first, move your units around and then wait for the enemy to play. Meanwhile this time, depending on the kind of order and the positions that you breach into the room, you'll see on the right side of the screen there is effectively a timeline which lists the order in which the units will attack. So it won't necessarily always be 
that you position all of your units and then wait for the enemy. Sometimes you may move just one unit and then it's their turn and then it's your turn again. And other times you also have the ability to use certain skills that will push units up the timeline, allowing you to move them together as a combined unit. So there's also kind of cool strategy there, but this interleave turn system basically kind of puts a nice dynamic spin on traditional XCOM gameplay. Furthermore, if you've played previous XCOM games before, you'll of course be familiar with uh, permadeath on your characters. That is not present in Chimera Squad. I know some people really enjoy that, but can be a little bit daunting if you're jumping in for the first time. So if your teammates die this time around, while yes, you will fail the mission, they will not be dead forever. I mean, that would be a little bit silly, given there's only 11 characters in the game. If they die forever, you'll very quickly run out of characters. You can, of course, revive them in the middle of a mission, and you do kind of need to do that. But permadeath on a kind of per character basis is not present in this game. Then somewhat linked to the previous point, and in number four we have the training room. This is a really cool addition to Chimera Squad that allows you to give your teammates, your agents, permanent buffs, things like health increase, that kind of stuff, damage, all those kind of useful things you'll want to have in battle. However, there is also another use to it. If your soldiers are heavily injured in the field, I mentioned how there isn't permadeath, but it is worth noting that if your agents are heavily injured, they can develop battle scars and other side effects that'll actually act as debuffs as you progress throughout the campaign. So while yes, you may not lose your agent, an agent in itself, if not kind of tended to, can become a lot less effective long term. So by sending them into the training room, not only can you improve your agents, you can also train them so that they can overcome their battle scars to basically avoid these debuffs. Of course, putting them into training does take them out of the rotation for a number of turns while they are training, but this is an integral part of moving forward because of course, if you do start taking that heavy damage, you do start kind of struggling as a result of that, then much later on, you're gonna have a much weaker team. And of course, finally, running out with number five, there is plenty of replayability in this game. So, you know, the game itself allows for a lot of player freedom, a lot of choice in terms of the missions you undertake. When you look at the mission board, when you look at the kind of cityscape, you'll have options between, you know, the missions you want to take on, the research you want to do, how you want to evolve and upgrade your squad, your support tech, and so on. This, of course, means there are tons of ways to approach the game and lots of scope for replayability. When you're selecting your missions, you have to kind of make these strategic choices because, of course, as you then dedicate your attention on, say, one part of the city, the other segment may begin to, you know, unbalance itself or there may be unrest that starts to build up within that area. And if you don't give it enough attention, then, of course, all hell breaks loose. So there's a fun sort of balancing act, but it also means that when you are playing the missions and kind of, you know, going back and replaying through things, then you can tackle the campaign in different ways each time around. Of course, outside of that, players, just generally speaking, will manage the operations of high-tech HQ. They also have to prioritize you know, the competing tasks, investigations, agent assignments. There's a lot of things to tick off as you're playing throughout the game, not just the strategic combat. There's also things you can do whilst back at base. So the game is pretty jam-packed with lots of things to do, lots of things to enjoy. So if you guys are looking for a strategy fix, something to kind of like dive into, then perhaps this might be one for you. Either way, that's it for the time being. There's a few things you might want to know about Chimera Squad. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are going to be jumping in yourself. And of course, be sure to keep it locked for plenty more. Thanks for watching, watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.